Today we are bringing all of the MMA news straight to you with timestamps if you'd like to skip to any particular part of the video. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I am your guy with too many YouTube channels and welcome back to everything that you missed in MMA this week. Guys, this is where we talk about all of the news, whether it's something everybody hears about with Conor McGregor or two fighters fighting that you have never heard about at all or whatever's trending in the UFC community. We're going to cover it all in this video and again guys, Timestamps are there if you'd like to skip to any particular part of the video. Let's get started with UFC 300. So there actually has been a lot of UFC 300 drama within the MMA community lately because, of course, at the time of recording this video, and it's unfortunate because you're seeing this video the day after it was recorded, so you're going to have a couple more UFC fights, but the community has just been exploding with UFC 300. They're saying it's not going to be as good as 299. That card is unreasonably stacked. 300, Dana White's hyping it up. Now we have Weili Zhang. Nobody wants to see a woman's title fight on the main card. Plus, Yuri, Pros Yuri Prohoshka versus Alexander Rakic is going to be an absolute boring fight with Yuri Prohoshka. He's not capable of having a boring fight, so I don't even know if people are saying that, but we have like half the card, less than half the card announced, and people are going crazy about it. So the drama of the week has been all about UFC 300. I don't know about the fights that you're going to see announced last night, but that doesn't matter. Wait until the entire card is announced, then you can have your criticisms. Then that's totally okay for me. Unless you have Whaley versus Yan Xiaonan, and then they end up announcing Leon versus Bala Muhammad. Then I would understand it a little bit. But still, doesn't mean the undercard could be a banger. Doesn't mean all the other fights on the card could be a banger. I just want everybody to just hold it a little bit. Hold it before you make your judgments. I might be there with you, just not yet. Let's move on though. So Tom Aspinall throughout the week has still been pursuing John Jones. Their Twitter beef has been just going crazy. John Jones is clearly ducking Tom Aspinall, which is, it's so crazy to be a spectator for John Jones right now because John Jones is like the toughest guy on the planet. He can beat up like the entire world. But when I, if you were to just like not know who John Jones is and look at his Twitter, you would think this guy is like, I don't know how else to say it, but like, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, like a little bitch. I don't know how else to say that. That's what you would think looking at John Jones' Twitter. I don't want to fight Tom Aspinall. Tom Aspinall, wham. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy me. Tom Aspinall is being so respectful. He's putting out the most perfect arguments as to why he should be next for John Jones. The entire world thinks he should be next for John Jones, but no. John Jones wants to build his legacy off of an old man. It's crazy to me what's going on. So Aspinall's still chirping. John Jones is still on Twitter responding to random fans. Don't get it, man. Might make a whole video talking about that, but it's crazy. More drama to talk about, though, because Sean O'Malley has been the center of attention this week because everybody's been making fun of Sean O'Malley, and I was going to make a whole separate video talking about this. Everybody's been making fun of Sean O'Malley throughout the entire week because they, this is essentially what the community's been saying. Oh, look who's not a star. Sean O'Malley's not a star because look at Dana White stacking UFC 299, and the MMA guru kind of like started this whole thing where it's Sean O'Malley's fault because of him not being a star that the UFC isn't having great 300 fights and they're putting it all on 299. I understand, like, uh, the way I'm seeing it is, who cares? Didn't they do this for Israel Adesanya before he, because he's not necessarily a draw, they stack his cards, but like, so what? It makes sense. They want to build O'Malley to be a star. Why not get more attention on the card? It's unfortunate that it's at the expense of 300, or maybe it's at the expense of 300. Again, we still don't have the full card announced. I'm going to wait to judge on that, but the entire community seems to be a little upset at Sean O'Malley right now, and... I, I, you shouldn't point your anger in his direction, to be honest with you. <laughs> but guys, let's take a look at Reddit now. From the UFC subreddit, this was the most trending posts of the week, <laughs> okay? There was a couple Ngannou posts, there was a couple John Jones posts, stuff that we've already talked about, and there's this. Attaboy, Ian, and I have seen this everywhere throughout the week. Honey, did you see my video defending you is going viral? <laughs> and they use, of course, that one picture of Ian Gary... Oh, man, the dude, the <laughs> whoever made this, man, it's wild. It's wild. I've seen this everywhere throughout the week. So this is what you have trending in the MMA community this week. But let's get serious again, talking about Paulo Costa or not serious because Paulo Costa came out and said that he hasn't signed a contract to fight Robert Whitaker. In a shocking turn of events, Paulo Costa might not show up, but Paulo Costa himself did say the fight is still on, but I'm not going to believe a thing Paulo Costa says until he's actually in that octagon. I trust him to fight less, more so than I do John Jones. How crazy is that? That's You got into a certain point, Paulo Costa. It's nuts, man. Next up, guys, Jim Miller actually started a petition, or he's beginning to start a petition. He said this at his media day. So what he wants to say, and you'll have to excuse my language, he, at UFC 300, because we know he is fighting on UFC 300, he wants to start a petition or is starting a petition for the UFC fans to have Bruce Buffer say and introduce him as Jim 
fucking Miller in the octagon. I think that's pretty stupid myself. I'm a huge Jim Miller fan, but I, I don't know where that came from. I don't know why it's a thing, but hey, that's what some people are talking about this week. Now, guys, before we get into the fight announcements, and there is a ton of fight announcements this week. Holy, it's crazy. But I want to take this time to talk about potential fights. People Like fights that aren't signed, the UFC might not be working on, but... Because something's being stirred up in social media, this is something that could absolutely come. So there's three things I do want to talk about. Ian Gary said that he wants Colby Covington on the undercard of Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. Giga Chikadze said that he accepted a fight against Josh Emmett at UFC 300. And Jorge Masvidal versus Nate Diaz is a in the, in the works for a boxing match. So two of those fights are likely to happen. Ian Gary versus Colby Covington. I don't know. Do you think Colby would take that fight? Regardless, these are fights that could happen come throughout the year and oh my god guys we have like 30 fight announcements to talk about if there's anything interesting i will stop and talk about them but i'm just gonna list them off for you throughout the week these are all of the fights and again whatever dana white now announced last night for usc 300 is excluded here okay manuel torres versus chris duncan on february 24th demba grimo versus pete rodriguez on february 3rd crosby is out of that fight lucas brzezki versus walter walker on april 6th danley barlow versus josh quinlan on february 17th Francis Ngannou versus Anthony Joshua in boxing on March 9th. Raul Rosas Jr. versus Ru uh, Ricky Turcohius on February 24th. Joel Alvarez versus Ludovic Klein on March 2nd. Bruno Silva versus Chris Weidman on March 30th. I want to stop and talk about these fights, but like Chris Weidman's back, man. He's going to get absolutely murdered. Dennis Bazooka versus Con Connor Matthews on Mar March 30th. Steven Nugayan versus Jarno Aarons on March 23rd. Ricardo Ramos versus Juliana Rosa on March 23rd. Davy Grant versus Cody Gibson on March 23rd. Charles Oliveira versus Armin Saruki and on UFC 300, which is an absolutely incredible fight. I love, love that fight. It's perfect for UFC 300, but people are still complaining about it. Dustin Poirier versus Benoit Saint Denis on UFC 299. I cannot wait for this one either. I actually, oh, I'm actually leaning towards Saint Denis on that one, man. I really am. Might be stupid looking back on it, but man, great fights. Tashiomi Kazama versus Char Lampos Grigagoru. Uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. My apologies. And that's on March 16th. Christian Rodriguez moving up a weight division against Isaac Dalgarian on March 16th. Dominic Reyes versus Carlos Olberg rescheduled to March 30th. Louis Rodriguez versus Dennis Bondar on February 24th. Robelis Despagin versus Josh Parisian at UFC 299. Michelle Pereira versus Michael Oleg Strick on UFC 299. Mohamed Nayov versus Eric Silva on February 24th. I always forget that Eric Silva's fighting until I see him, or like in the UFC still. Daniel Zellhuber versus Francisco Prado on February 24th. Tr Christian Quinozes versus Rioni Barcelona on February 24th. Viniscus Oliveira versus Yanis Gimori on March 2nd. Jarzino Rosenstruck versus Shamil Gaziev on March 2nd. Cowan Lauren versus Angel Pacheo on March 30th. Brian Battle versus Angel Usa on March 16th. Corey McKenna versus Jacqueline Amram on March 16th. Claudio Puelas versus Faraz Zayim on February 24th. Javid Bashrat versus Ayman Zahabi on March 2nd. Chidi Nogogorshi versus Reese McKee on March 30th. Zhang Weili versus Yan Jiaonan on UFC 300. Tiago Moises versus Brad Riddell on March 16th. And Randy Brown versus Muslim Salikov on February 3rd. It took me over two minutes to talk about all of those fight announcements. I think this is the biggest chunk of fight announcements we've ever gotten in a week. And there's a lot to look forward to here, man. There's a lot of great fights. I love the UFC 300 announcements. I'm even okay with Zhang Weili, to be honest with you. Brian Battle's always great. I like watching Randy Brown. Shamil Ghazi, I'm interested in taking on a contender. Deporia versus St. Denis, probably the best one on there. Dominic Reyes, Chris Weidman are back. Mohamed Naimov is always fun to watch. I'm really looking forward to him. I'm looking forward to watching uh, Christian Rodriguez as well. There's a lot of great fights to look forward to. Holy, that's a lot of fights, man. A big, big week of fight announcements. Now for fights to watch this weekend, guys, we also have a ton of fights. We have a ton of fights. You have one championship in LFA both tonight, one fight night in LFA having their big return. UFC has a big return tomorrow. You guys can't miss any of these cards, to be honest with you. Well, I'm going to have to miss LFA because one championship is my personal favorite organization. I will never miss their cards, so I'm not tuning in to see LFA when they're having the same night as one championship. But man, fights are back. Fights are strong. I'm excited for a year. But speaking of being excited for a year, guys, I do have a question for you. Do you feel bad for Bilal Muhammad with everything that he's been going through, especially with the fans? Well, if you do, check out this video, or if you don't, just check out the video anyways and disagree with me in the comment section. Check out this video I made. I feel bad for Bilal Muhammad, and I'll let you know why in this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.